in this show mac studios m2 mac minis which mac laptop you should buy and what is going on with the imac i'm mike f david and i simplify everything so that apple just works for you and if you want the latest apple news leaks and rumors like the video subscribe to the channel and ring the bell and today we are answering your questions so let's get straight into the first one evan rogers asks i cave answers you can buy a full fat m2 pro mac mini and an apple refurbished m1 max mac studio for around about the same price other than better ports what exactly will the mac studio be better at i think the mini will still get better performance now we wait for max text testing so there are definitely going to be some differences here i think there is a chance we might get some slight throttling in the m2 mac mini although that remains to be seen it has got a decently beefy fan on there but the studio has definitely got better cooling the big difference here is going to be in terms of graphics performance graphics is going to be faster on the max chips even if it's the m1 versus the m2 but not as huge of a difference as you would expect i think the studio also yes as you said has got better port selection there is a little bit more flexibility in there in terms of what you can plug into it but you can also pick up something like the quiz labs mac mini dock which i use and that will actually allow you to put a couple of of SSDs inside an M.2 and a SATA SSD as well as giving you extra ports and it still sits a lot lower a lot kind of more slim on your desktop than the Mac Studio does so it's really up to you what you want to do I think the Mac Mini is going to be better for most people I think it does work out a little bit cheaper uh, although if you do spec it up to get to the same specs as the Mac Studio it gets pretty muddy. It's within a hundred bucks either way, I think. So really, it's about what you prefer. If you don't need the power of a Max, uh, you know, and you're happy to go refurbished, because bear in mind there is a difference between refurbished and regular. Not a massive one. They both come with the warranties, especially when you're going direct from Apple. So yeah. Pick, take your choice. It really makes no massive difference. Eugene King asks, I gave answers. Will the next update to the Mac Studio computer be M2 Pro Max Ultra chips, or will we have to wait for the M3 version of Apple Silicon? PS, have a great 2023. I've got a feeling that we are going to get an M2 version of the Mac Studio. I think it is probably going to be coming out this spring. I think we've probably still uh, got enough time for that. That could well be in March. Uh, whether this Mac Pro is going to come or not, maybe that's going to replace it briefly, but I don't. I don't think the studio is going away. I think the Mac Studio is perfect for people that are doing higher end video production. The Mac Pro, probably if you need to get into heavy duty AI, machine learning, that kind of stuff, that's where that's going to excel right now, at least with the uh, with the Intel versions. You know, you can put multiple GPUs in there if you need to run those in parallel. I don't think that's what's going to happen with the Mac Pro once we get to Apple Silicon, uh, but uh, I think it's a tricky one. I think we might be waiting for M3 for the Mac Pro. I think that might be coming, you know, late this year maybe we get an m2 version this year i don't know it's a tricky one and there isn't really a, a good line yet until we see what the mac pro is actually going to be between the studio and the pro evan rogers asks ik advances how do you want apple to implement multi-touch display interfaces in mac os should they make foldables multiple screens tablets running mac os now i'm going to be honest i don't want ipads with mac os the whole point of the ipad is it runs ipad os it's designed for touch mac os is not designed for touch i think there will be some changes coming to it and i think one of the big things that we will probably see is display scaling so if you're in I don't know, touchscreen mode, you will probably get different parts of the display a little bit uh, bigger. So you'll get things like the traffic lights at the top for minimize, uh, maximize and, uh, and and close for windows. I think that will maybe pop out. I think we said something like a, uh, a long press or maybe we even bring back force touch. Uh, I think that the laptops will need a bit of a redesign if they're going to be in the same form factor we have right now, because I actually think that uh, the displays need to be more durable if they're going to be a, a touch surface. If you're going to be poking them in different parts, People are not always as gentle as I am with my devices. That capacitive touch, lovely. Uh, a lot of people still poke away, which is why the iPads have a little bit thicker glass. I don't really see that many broken iPad screens these days. It seems like they've got a lot more durable. People still talk about broken MacBooks. So, um, yeah, I think that needs to be addressed. Other than that, in terms of interface, I, I, I really don't know. I don't like the idea of mixing desktop and touch operating systems. It doesn't really make any sense to me. I think Apple Pencil is the way to go rather than and fingers um but being able to just you know scroll up your screen when you're wandering around the kitchen and you've got something going on you want to have a quick look at stuff scrolling on the screen i think is a you know a useful thing i don't think it's going to be a full touch operating system though it doesn't make any sense to me
Tim Kinetics asks, I gave answers advice, please. My partner would like a Mac. She'd like a Starlight M2 MacBook Air. Once we bump the storage up to 512, it costs around 1400. A refurbished 14 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Pro and 512 gigs of storage is about 1450, but she really likes the Starlight color. Should I steer her towards an objectively better laptop that's more powerful than she'd actually need in a color she doesn't want, or buy her the laptop she does want, even though it makes my geek senses tingle, then I'm not getting as much performance as I possibly could could for my money. So I think the important thing to realize here is that it's not just about the performance. There are a lot of bigger advantages to go into the MacBook Pro 14 inch over the 13 inch M2 MacBook Air. Now I should point out I'm an M2 MacBook Air user. Like that's the one that I want. And if you want something that's light and portable and very easy to throw in your bag and take with you, this is a better product for that. Base at a desk, um, you know, the 14 inch is a great idea. It is substantially heavier but you are also going to get that much better display even if we put aside the performance for the moment you're going to get a much better display in the mini led retina xdr display whatever they're calling it this week you're also going to get that bit of extra performance you are going to get more ports you're going to get a lot more flexibility with it but I, I think the way to decide this is it's got to be your partner's decision. But take her to an Apple store and look at the two displays side by side. I think that might be what clinches it. That's my thoughts. And she might put up with the different color for that improved display. And again from Team Kinetics, IK answers, why no M2 iMac? When might we see an M2 iMac after the MacBook Pro's press release? Could we see an M2 iMac drop with little notice? Now, I really thought that we would have seen the M2 iMac come at the same time as the Mac Mini because, let's be honest, they're just swapping out the chip. It's not like a big job. It's basically swap the board out, everything else stays the same, no dramas. So it could well come at a press release. It could be that they just don't have quite enough ready to drop it straight away yet. Or maybe they're not doing one. It depends. We don't get to see the sales behind the scenes. Maybe the iMacs have not been selling well, but I, I see them out and about quite a lot in stores. I see them in hotel receptions. I see them in all these places. So I think they're actually doing fine. Are they going to do the M2? I think they will, but uh, I don't really know. Uh, Apple is all over the place at the minute with timings and stuff. I still think that everything is going to go to that annual update cycle. Been saying it for years. I think we'll be getting M3 in June. So, um, you know, maybe they're going to hold on. Maybe they're going to do it. I think June is when we're going to see that MacBook Air 15 inch, though. That's coming. But Apple products are expensive. And, and is it worth updating everything all the time? Regardless of what purchase you have your eye on next, basics like a new MacBook, a HomePod, or something more opulent like food, we all know that prices are rising. That's why I've partnered with Mint Mobile for this video to help save you money. Thanks to that guy from those movies, Ryan Reynolds, because he owns it. Hey there, it's Ryan Reynolds owner of Mint Mobile. Enticing, right? You can switch to Mint Mobile today and get premium wireless for as low as $15 a month without sacrificing your coverage, your speed, or your data because they're built on America's largest 5G network, keeping costs low by selling directly online without retail stores or salespeople. They just get me. Switching is super easy and with a digital eSIM and all of the iPhones since the 10s have supported eSIMs, you can sign up and activate right now on your phone from the comfort of your home. No standing around and you can keep your current device and phone number. And if you need a physical SIM, Mint Mobile will ship you one free of charge. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. Mint Mobile will show you how much data you use each month and recommend the right plan to save you money or check out their modern family plan. Super affordable and starting at just two lines. Use my link mintmobile.com forward slash iCaveDave in the description and you'll get premium wireless starting at just $15 a month. Stop paying more than you need to on your wireless bill and start saving with my partner Ryan Ren. I'm Mint Mobile. Thanks to Mint Mobile for supporting the show. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. If you want to subscribe, the button's right down there. Thank you to all the Patreons for your support and we will see you in the next one.